God, I know everyone and their mother has made a video on NoFap, but... The NoFap. About NoFap. Because I'm on 30 days of NoFap. Or NoFap. You've known as NoFap. I mean, when people are making claims like this... Claiming that NoFap has completely cured them of their social anxiety. They gain superhuman powers. Nine months in, I felt like Superman. I got a job promotion. High confidence, maximum motivation, more energy, testosterone. I could pick up a truck. Really get me out of my depressions. Greater self-confidence. I could carry a grandma down the stairs. I just, I know so many clients of mine that I work with that try to get into NoFap and then they give up because they see so many claims like that and they think, well, why am I not experiencing this? So I'm going to give you the truth about what exactly happens when you stop masturbating, especially to porn. As of making this video, it's been about, I don't know why I'm looking at my watch, but about 90 days, 92, I think in general or in specific in detail and it's been 92 days since I started NoFap and I have seen some changes. Now, I cannot you know, lift my grandma with my one pinky, but at the same time, there are some benefits and there are some things that people say happen that actually don't. By giving you the truth about scientifically what happens with NoFap, you'll know if it's worth actually doing. So in this video, you're going to get three scientific, objective, specific things that have happened beneficially in my life after continuing NoFap. Number one, I have a lot more of this. No, not watches, I have one watch, but time. I have a lot more time. Look, I did some research and the average porn session on Pornhub is about 10 minutes. Now, if you take other sites people go to, the setting up, the cleaning up, everything, let's say conservatively that an average session costs you about 30 minutes per session. Now, the average time someone has a session per week is on average two times per week. This equates to about 240 minutes per month or 2,880 minutes per year or 48 hours or two full days of, you know, doing your thing. Imagine taking two full days, 48 hours and translating that time from that into working out, into meditating, into reading books, into trainings, anything self-productive. You see, by masturbating, especially to porn, what happens is that you waste a lot of time in areas of your life that you can develop. The second scientific sign of you quitting porn for good is regulating your dopamine system. Now, if you don't know this, dopamine is that neurochemical in your brain, the transmitter, that adds incentive to go get things in life. 50% of our dopamine receptors are activated when we're hungry for food. 100% is activated when we want sex. And what happens is that whenever we have an excess amount and we get something easily, our brain's like, oh, okay, we don't need to exert as much dopamine in that area as much. So if you imagine it like this, let's uh, go to the board. All right, so basically, thanks uh, Josh there. Uh, so basically, this is the amount of times you're gonna get off. This is the level of your dopamines, 100% activated, 75, 50, etc. Let's say the first time you watch porn, you're very motivated and this much dopamine's released, 100%, but you didn't have to take a lot of action to get the porn since it's so instantaneous getting all this reward, good, feel good chemical from the easy access, your body's like, okay, we only need to release this much next time to get, get off, to get that need met. And then the next time, it's that, and the next time, and eventually you need more novelty each time to get off and you need less dopamine. So when you have that need and that desire to actually go out and talk to a woman, you're gonna have very little dopamine and very little incentive to go talk to her because of how easy you can get it when you're on the computer. Thanks, Science Josh. The last and final benefit is that it affects your mental health or your self-esteem. One study took over 450 people and asked them questions about their porn frequency and their mental health. Nearly 30% reported that they view pornography at least three to five times a week, and over 25% indicate that they view pornography daily. The general population on this score or this measure had a 6.5 level of their depression. However, the people who viewed porn three to five times per week had a depression score of 18. Now, the question is the chicken and the egg. Are you depressed so you watch porn more or does watching porn make you more depressed? I think they're cyclical. I think they affect each other. But essentially, this study shows that the more you view porn, the more isolated you feel and the more depressed you get. Another study showed that porn directly relates to your self-esteem, especially in bed. Basically, what this chart shows is that they look at what porn does and the realism or anti-realism that it has and the perceived effects of how sex is supposed to be and the person's genital appearance satisfaction. 
and then that measures or decreases their self-esteem. And when someone is consistently viewing porn and they increase their standards for what they want to get off, but then they're comparing themselves to other people in the porn, they feel less motivated to go out and actually have genuine connections with others. Look, from my personal experience, not including scientific evidence, stopping the viewing of porn has drastically changed my life. Now, when I work with clients, they ask me if they can still masturbate and not watch porn. And honestly, I don't see a problem with that. I personally don't choose to do that, but because I think porn is the real enemy and not masturbation. But all in all, what happens is what I've noticed for myself and what I notice is for clients that I work with is that when you stop watching porn, you don't isolate yourself in regards to sex. And also, imagine how you feel after you view pornography. After you view pornography, you feel guilty and shameful and kind of flat and disgusting and, and just deflated. I mean, Joe Rogan talks about that. So I've always thought, uh, generally, like if I'm in a period in my life where I'm jerking off a lot, it's like usually like there's something imbalanced in there. Like yeah. I don't mean to apply like a, a sin to it at all. I'm just saying like personally, yeah. it feels a little dissipative when you're doing it a lot. There, I, is, is, I don't know. That's, no, I completely agree. As a tip, start to recognize your emotional state before you view porn. Are you bored? Because boredom is often a reflection of things you're trying to avoid in life. When you're bored, you're lacking meaning. And when we lack meaning in life, we go towards pleasure. You know, and I've been personally struggling with stopping porn for years. And finally, I have it down. And honestly, I got to a dark place before I made the decision. I was doing things and watching things that I was not proud of. And the way it made me feel after, I hated myself. And there had to be a turning point. If I continued down this path, I was acting in a way that didn't match up with my identity. And that's what you need to change. If you change your identity as someone who doesn't watch porn, because it's so accepted. Someone who separates himself from the majority of society that is able to become better, to reach a higher paradigm and not be, to not succumb to something so cheap, to force yourself to work for things and earn it. When you're able to do that, when you're able to fully love yourself and get to a place where you don't need that cheap gratification, you have more self-discipline and more self-respect. And from there, Man, you can move mountains and lift grandmas with your pinkies. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video, guys. You know I love you. Show us some support. Watch these other two videos about porn right here. And I will see you next time. Adios. Just a small town girl.